I met Christopher Lee in a chat room on the internet. The more we began to speak, the more I began to enjoy our time, his perspective. He publishes a blog out of his dojo in Honolulu. Create a Beautiful World is happy to bring you a conversation with Christopher Lee. Christopher, thank you for being with us. There's a difficulty with Marie Hewe Shiba. I mean, you talk about there are, there are very few people who are close to that. Um, Marie Hewe Shiba is very difficult to understand. I think that's pretty widely accepted. Almost, almost all of his students said they really didn't understand what he could get. Some of the students admitted they couldn't even understand what he was saying because he had a very heavy accent. You know, he, had, he, he spoke Wakayama Ben, you know, from the southern Japan. And uh, especially at that time, spoke in very, very difficult metaphors. Um, I think he wasn't, he wasn't uninterested in explaining, but he wasn't going to put a lot of effort into it. You know, he, he'd lay it out and uh, there, there was a high learning bar. You, you get it or you don't get it. There, there was a real disconnect in the explanations. And so the message gradually gets degraded. You know, and uh, O-Sensei's message was not easy. So if, if people don't put in the effort to, uh, uh, de to decode it or to figure it out what's going on, then uh, it, you know, it gets lost. So you have the technical people. People are just doing technique. Of course, oh, since they never emphasized the importance of technique. Every explanation he ever gave of IQ was based on uh, philosophical, spiritual, and technical principles. One of the things Gozo Shiro said he remembers most from pre-war, when Osensei was arguably the most technical, was that Osensei always told him to ignore technique, learn it and forget it. Right? It's not, essentially speaking, very useful. When, when you talk to Kishimaru Ueshiba, Kishimaru Doshu, at one point he says, uh, you know, I started studying Aikido around 1938. He said, I had already learned the techniques by then. It only takes two or three years to learn the techniques. Uh, but that's what we have today. People who uh, they've kind of lost the explanation, although there's some lip service paid to it, and then they uh, become technical. Technical practitioners are doing technique, technique, technique. Um, then you get another group of people, and then people say, Aikido is love, right? And of course, that's true. Oh, since they said, Aikido is love, 1933, way back when, when he was teaching Daituru, teaching people how to throw people head first in the ground. He said, Aiki is the source of love. But uh, what the other, the part of the discussion is, that isn't usually brought up in that case is how you get there and how that would work. 1932, when our sensei was interviewed, is there a method? He says, yes, there's a method. They say, can anybody learn it? He says, yes, anybody can learn it. Unfortunately, the interviewer didn't say, well, what is the method? Right, right. Yeah, I did see that. I did see that. There are a lot of gaps, and there, there isn't that opportunity. You know, the uh, internet, of course, has relieved some of that, right? Because inf information is now more freely shared. But uh, people, more people need to get involved in looking deeply into uh, what was happening, what was being said, so that people can uh, discuss this with... Um, in an educated manner, based on what, you know, what, what was actually said by the founder, which most people have never read, to be fair, either English or Japanese, right? They are the only translations available in English, if you're not talking to someone who actually spoke to him, to spoke to a sensei, then probably you're looking at some book, which is, um, the translations are partial. Uh, oftentimes they're taken from sources that have been altered in some way. Uh, they, uh, they're out of context, but if you look at any other field, right, that's been around for a long time, any, any intellectual field that's been a long time, none of them will ever rely on one set of translations, right? Translations, translators argue about uh, what it, exactly what it was supposed to mean. Uh, people write scholarly works on what they thought. Another person writes uh, a work saying, no, he's full of crap. It was completely the opposite. And I think for a long time, we didn't have that in Aikido, really on a, on a serious level. And I think that's important for it, for it to move forward. People have to the words themselves, and even if they don't agree, especially if they don't agree, they have to be discussing, you know, he says, I think he said that, and this is why. And so, you know, I, he's, I think he said that, and I think this is why. Uh, through that process comes a deeper understanding.